In two magical African wilderness areas, the Masai Mara in Kenya and the Great Kugu National Park in South Africa, five expert safari guides follow a cast of compelling animal characters and the never-ending stories that define their lives. The Cat Report documents real stories of real predators, as witnessed and captured by a band of obsessive wildlife filmmakers who live and work in the bush 365 days of the year. Our team broadcasts blow-by-blow -blow accounts of these animals, month in and month out, and few have the same insight into their lives as we do. Brent is on the trail of the buffalo hunting sausage tree pride. Jamie is watching the saga as the matriarch of the North Clan of Hyena nears retirement. Scott is keeping pace with spots as they streak through the grass of the Myra Triangle, while Tristan and I are enjoying a game of leopard thrones and lion wars. I'm sitting in a picturesque grove of Tambuti trees with two very special cats, Tandi, a 12-year-old leopardess, and her nine-month-old cub, Tlalamba. Tandi is queen of this region of the Western Kruger National Park, a central character on the stage that is Juma Private Game Reserve. Tandi is a leopardess born to the royal lineage of Juma. She has stalked these verdant woodlands for 12 years. Her name means beloved, and she has captivated many hearts. In November 2017, she gave birth to a precious princess. A ball of delightful spots, fluff, and insistent demands. Our hearts melted as Tandi's habitual impatience and bad temper was suspended for her adorable daughter. From the beginning, the cub was playful and mischievous, characteristics that earned her the name Tlalamba. Tlalamba was the only cub in her litter, and so, in addition to being provider and protector, Tandi has had to be playmate too. Often merging game time with bath time and using some extremely dangerous cleaning implements for the job. The captivating games develop the muscles and neurological pathways crucial for developing the strength and speed critical for leopard life. Learning agility can be painful. But mum is always there for comfort. As the months passed, Tlalamba grew, and her boisterous games often incurred the wrath of her irritable mother, albeit with gentleness. This duo shares a powerful bond, and Tandi will reign a ferocious terror of claws and teeth on anything or anyone who threatens the life of her precious princess. Now, I've had a magnificent time of it this week. We found Tandi and Tlalamba not shy of three times, which is pretty unbelievable luck.
Now this kill she has in the tree is number three of the week. Tundi's had a very busy time of it trying to feed her little daughter, now growing pretty large. The alarm barks of a Nyala herd led us to Tundi returning to Kalamba after a breakfast expedition. The hungry cub was delighted with her scrub hair meal and Tandi was left to rest in the morning sun. Talumba's table manners leave a lot to be desired for a royal princess, but it is marvellous to behold her astonishing reflexes. The queen was also suitably impressed. I doubt Talumba learned a great deal about killing in this exercise, but she certainly had a good workout, as did her mother later in the day. It is extremely wow to be watching something like this, especially in the day. There, look at this amazing movement. Look how careful she is about how she places her feet. There's a Nyara, ooh, like I say, 30 meters in front of her. That is a big, big animal for Tandi to kill. It's gonna make that little scrub hair she had for breakfast look like a very small hors d'oeuvre. She's got it. She's got it, she's killed it. Unbelievable stuff. That's unbelievable. All I saw was this cat running, and then I saw the flash of the white tail of the poor Nyala. Tandi is an exceptional huntress. This Nyala bull was at least twice her weight. She tore off the indigestible fur and set to the rich meat of the hindquarters. The size of her meal was a mixed blessing, however. The Nyala was too big to hoist or stash in the thicket, and hyenas stole it from her after dark. Before that, however, there was time to fetch Tlalamba for a quick supper. Now, wasn't that an astonishing thing to see her killing that Nyala? Nyala double her weight, I reckon and she's been extremely patient with her little daughter and I think they've actually spent quite a lot of bonding time around this week. Normally they tend to spend more time apart as she's getting a bit older but this week they seem to have rebonded quite nicely. With her belly full the princess was playful and without a sibling her normally impatient mother was the only available playmate. Perhaps these games conjure joyful memories of the queen's own cubhood. She certainly seemed to be having fun. For a while at least. Eventually, more pressing matters, like the need for a snooze perhaps, ended Tundi's part in the afternoon game. Well, these aren't the only leopards that we've seen this week. Tundi's consort, Tingana, the aging duke, has had a tough time protecting his dukedom. Tingana, Duke of Juma is almost 13 years old. Nearing the end of his reign is a dominant male leopard. But he is not yet ready to retire, despite pressure from opportunistic younger rivals. Hukumuri, the potential usurper, is young, ambitious and powerful. He's also a warthog killer extraordinaire. Time will tell whether the Duke's size and experience will be enough to see off his determined young rival. Well, she's woken up to say hello to you and uh, probably at the sound of the name of her consort, Tingana, she thought to herself, what a dashing fellow he is, a little bit old, but gosh, he does get better looking with age. Look at her looking dreamy at the thought of him. 
Well, dreamy he may be, but a useful and attentive partner in the parenting of Tlalamba, Tingana is not. This, of course, is the case with all the cats, even the swiftest of them all. We are currently sitting at Kekenya's favorite lookout point, and while she isn't here now, I'm hoping she's going to show up sometime soon. She loves to use that rock as a vantage point to detect either predators and or prey. Both of these are essential tasks for a cheetah with a family to take care of. Kekenya lives in the borderlands between the Mara and the Serengeti. Her name means early morning in the local language Ma. We think she is about seven years old. In 2016, she raised four cubs to independence, an astounding feat for a mother cheetah. In May, we found her with a new litter of five cubs. If any cheetah can raise five cubs, it's Kekenya. Kekenya really is an amazing mother, and as we mentioned earlier, she did manage to raise a litter of four cubs to independence a couple of years back. So she's definitely got the experience it takes, but there is a long list of threats to young cheetah cubs. Mainly other predators, lion, leopard, hyena, but even Cape buffalo will trample and gore young cheetah cubs if they come across them. Now, despite that long list of kind of threats that they need to try and avoid, another thing that cheetahs need to get right is the ability to bring down enough prey, not only for themselves, but of course also for their growing cubs. And this is one thing that Kikenya gets right. On Tuesday, Kikenya rose from the den sites. She waded her way through a sea of long grass, stopping and scanning for prey as she went. There wasn't much prey to see in the immediate area. Until a lone Tommy poked his head out of the long grass. Sadly, we didn't see the chase, which seemed to be more of a pounce. But she managed to bring down the Tommy and spent the rest of the day gorging herself. This meal will go a long way, ensuring she provides the five cubs with much needed milk. So we have still not had any luck in our quest for finding Kikenya. All we've managed to find are these three buffalo bulls, which are sadly far too large for her to take down. But I'm hoping that we're going to get to see the fastest mammal on the planet do its thing in a little while. One of my favorite attributes of the cheetah when they are moving at full speed is probably their tail, the way they use it like a rudder to guide them at the high speeds that they're moving at. And also obviously their prey are often dodging from left to right, so their tail helps to keep them on the tail of their prey. Speaking of catching up with the cheetah and them hunting, if we're going to find her, we're going to need to keep on searching. As you can see, it's been a rather busy week for Tandy, and all that meat comes uh, in the desperate need for relief. Now she's covering up her scat, eyeing the viscera from her victim and the bits of meat that have dropped from the tree. She's probably hoping a hyena won't pick up on the scent. Mm. There, now she's called the cub. Tlalamba, as always, wants a little game. But I think perhaps Tundi feels that Sunday afternoon nap time is more important than playtime. A bit like uh, my own mother when I was a young cub on Sunday afternoons. I guess it must be tough having a mother as strict as Tundi. The Queen has um, a short fuse and she gets very grumpy very quickly at times. Well, that's not to say she isn't a very loving mother. Oh, it looks like the little princess is going to investigate where her mother relieved herself and perhaps do the same.
Right, let's go and meet a special clan of creatures. Ranking just below the mighty lion, a bit dog-like, but more closely related to cats, the spotted hyena is a worthy inclusion in the cat report. Jamie has been doing an astonishing job deciphering the dynamics of the North Clan of Hyena as they roam the plains of the Masai Mara. For the last few months, I've spent my time exploring the Mara Triangle and, in particular, sinking my teeth into learning about the dynamics of a formidable clan of hyena, the North Clan. Now that's the clan that has the den site right up close to our camp. We have spent every single morning with them, and with the help of the students from the Michigan State University, we're really starting to get to know them. There are eight cubs between the ages of four and six months, and there are two sets of brand new little ones, one of which belongs to the matriarch, whose name is Waffles. Waffles is a hyena that was born of low rank and fought her way to the pinnacle of the clan hierarchy. You can see that she wears a collar. That is because these hyenas have been researched for over 30 years. At 12 years old, Waffles will soon pass the mantle of leadership to her granddaughter, Soup. As the sun sets on Waffles' reign, Soup will assert her genetic right to the throne, but not without a power struggle. A female called Sawa is eyeing the position for herself. Sawa is backed by four adult daughters, a veritable army to support her challenge. Soup's ranks are smaller, with just two cubs and an aging grandmother. The scene is set for an epic power play. Will hereditary right or aggressive might win the matriarchy? And it's dramatic scenes here at the North Clan Hyena Den. Soup, that female over there, has brought back some meat. But even within the royalty of a hyena clan, only one cub is dominant, and the one complaining is the one that didn't get a breakfast this morning. Oh, it was a complete reverse situation just a few days ago when Soup also brought back some meat for her cubs. To be a high-ranking hyena cub generally means getting the best of everything, even when it's a stolen meal. Of course, having a sibling often means having to share or even go without. In this case, Charles' sister Lobster was mysteriously absent, which well and truly worked in Charles' favor. As the submissive sibling, Charles often loses out to her sister, so this was a rare opportunity to gorge herself silly. Poor clam chowder. The last few days ago, she was the one who got lucky, but now she is throwing an absolute tantrum. And you should hear the sound she's making. Just listen to this. <laughs> that sound is called squittering, and it's her begging for her mother's milk. Poor little clam chowder. Her sister lobster is finishing off what's left of it, and soup really couldn't care less, judging by her expression. Not all of the hyena in the Mara have clam chowder's woes. There seems to be lots of action in another part of the Mara where the happy zebra clan are keeping Brent well and truly entertained with their pursuit of a meal. Proper pandemonium around this buffalo herd. We had a report that there were lions hunting, but we've got you and it's actually spotted hyenas hunting. Oh, there's a calf by itself. There's a calf by itself. The hyenas on the run. There's a calf that's been separated from the herd. Just the calf and mom. Now there are about five or six hyenas during this hunt. This is a young baby buffalo that the happy zebra clan have managed to sequest away from the herd. There's just hyenas coming in from everywhere as these distress calls get louder and louder. It could bring in lions. You never know what's going to happen next. This is nature though, and this is happening right in front of us. Look at that, hyenas jumping up and down, making sure that there's no other predators like lions charging in. I'm just keeping my head on a swivel. You never know what's going to happen next in these situations. The more noise that buffalo makes, the bigger chance there are that other predators could arrive.
and all of a sudden, some members of the Sausage Tree Pride have appeared out of nowhere. Oh, there's another lion jogging in in the distance. Now, Kapuli has got the back end of the carcass. And now the girl's going to try and sneak in for a quick meal. <laughs> He's lying on top of it to try and prevent anyone else getting at it. Absolutely incredible stuff. And that's why we spend hour upon hour out in the African bush. Most times we have snoozing lions, but today we've had all the action. In the Mara, there are many prides of Africa's largest cat. But one pride in particular stands out from the rest. The sausage tree pride. This is a band of five lioness, two young males, and a larger male marked by a split nose. The most recognizable member of the pride is an older female called Kinky Tail. This pride is a force to be reckoned with, and any buffalo is fair game. The pride's attacks are strategic, targeting individuals rather than the herd. But these old bulls are the most dangerous to hunt. The females are fearless, but the presence and participation of the males in the hunt changes the game completely. Rendering the pride a deadly killing machine. Can you believe it has been nearly 40 minutes and Soup still has not allowed her daughter to suckle? Uh, at around about seven months old, a child should be suckling for another six or so months. But today, Soup is just not interested. And her poor, desperate little daughter has been whining and squealing and making, quite frankly, the most appalling racket to try and get her mother to feed her to the point that she's now actually afraid of her mother because Soup keeps snapping at her. I think the child just can't understand that her sister's had all of the breakfast and she's had nothing. I can't understand why Soup won't let her suckle. Either she's feeling a little bit sore today or perhaps she's feeling rather round and full. But either way, the granddaughter of the matriarch is just not feeding her progeny. Poor little thing, I cannot get over the sounds that she's been making and she's been trying to get some breakfast. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon. The princess is there in the tree again, playing with her food and table manners are Pretty average for someone of royal blood. I think the only reason there's so much left of this tiny antelope is that the two leopards have been feeding all week. That diker for a hungry leopard wouldn't, well, probably wouldn't last a day. Columba's behaviour here looks to me like play rather than hunger. And I imagine she probably gets bored being an only child. Unfortunately for her, that diker is unlikely to wake up and join the game. It's a little bit of a macabre toy, but I suppose the fun is doubled by the toy being stashed in this perfectly climbable tree. You can see there that uh, well, there's very little eating going on. It always amazes me how huge her feet are. I suppose it's always the case with young cats or dogs. Her tracks will become almost indistinguishable from Tundi's pretty soon, despite the fact that she probably won't be as big as her mum for at least another year. Now there's rather vicious claws, very useful for playing and climbing now. It will soon become fearsome weapons. I sometimes wonder if a cat like Tundi is able to feel contented. Does she ever think to herself, Phew, I can just have a day off. We've had lots to eat, supper is safe in the tree and I'll just take a chill. No, I'm sure there's no conscious thought in this, but it's nice to think of her lying down in the stunning grove of Tambutis, thinking to herself, ah, what a perfect place to be for the weekend. 
Well, it seems like Kikenya is taking the day off because there's no sign of her here at her usual spots. By now, normally, she would have already poked her head out. Over the last week, we have been with Kikenya every day and are getting to know some of her habits. Once her belly is full, she is content to leave the den only to drink at nearby water. A full belly usually keeps her content for about two to three days before she goes out in search of her next meal. We find Kikenya posing beautifully on a rock at the base of the hill where she is currently denning. It's clear by her thin tummy that she is hungry and in search of food. She bounds through the long grass with purpose and she makes her way to the only decent vantage point in the open plains. A massive tree. She pauses briefly, making a quick calculation before ascending with ease. Once up, she begins to scan and it seems as though she's spotted something. She focuses in before swiftly descending. Soon we see what she has spotted. A herd of wildebeest moves off in the distance. She moves closer and realizes they are a bit large for her and watches them pass by. Realizing there is no other food in sight, she begins to make her way back to the den. She glides through the long grass effortlessly and moves up the hill before disappearing for the rest of the day. Hopefully she'll make an appearance soon, but I've got a feeling she may have snuck off hunting. Now, there's not too much prey in the immediate area, so she may have moved further afield. And I think we need to think about doing the same thing. So we're gonna keep moving and start searching and scanning the surrounding area. Don't worry, we'll be sure you are the first people to know when we find her. As sunset brings a close to the day, so it also finishes the very first catapult. The dramas that are the lives of our captivating predator characters continue, however, in an unpredictable cycle of triumph and tragedy. Can Kakenya save her cubs from the myriad perils of the Masai Mara? Will Tandi be able to protect precious nine-month-old Princess Tlalamba? Will the bounty of the migration allow the sausage tree pride to settle down and augment their numbers with some cubs? Who will ultimately ascend to the matriarchy of the North Clan? If you want to find out, join us next time from the Masai Mara in Kenya and the Kruger Park in South Africa for The Cat Report.